A von quadrant analog divider is implemented in this circuit using four ideal op amps and four BJT or bipolar junction transistors. We want to show that the output voltage in this circuit is related to V1, V2, V3, and therefore with a proper selection of voltages, we can effectively realize an analog divider, von quadrant analog divider, in which we assume that V1, V2, V3 are all positive polarity. So with that in mind, uh, let's see how this works. Okay, so let's make the assumption that the op amps are properly biased, so the supply voltage is positive and negative supply voltage for the op amps are properly connected, so that all the op amps are operating properly in linear region, not saturated. As a result, mutual short is valid for all the op amps, which means that positive voltage, positive input terminal of the op amp has the same voltage as its negative input terminal. And you can see that for all these four op amps, uh, one, let's say, op amp let's say op amp 2 and op amp 4 you can see that all the positive terminals are connected to ground or AC ground so as a result effectively all the negative net terminals because of mutual short all the negative terminals are also at zero volt okay so let's keep that in mind now with that said um, focus on let's focus on uh, transistor Q1 this is Q2 and let's say this one is Q3 and then this one is Q4. So for transistor Q1, uh, we can see that uh, from the base, which is uh, effectively ground or at zero volt, so from there, we have a voltage drop at uh, from base to emitter, VBE1. And then from the emitter, we get to base of transistor Q3 because the emitter of one connected to base of Q3. And then from there, we have another base emitter, this time base emitter of 3, and we get to the common emitter here, which is the emitter of 3 and 4 that is in common. From there, the same story happens. You can see that at the right side, from here, uh, we are going from, uh, from, let's say, the AC ground to 0 volt uh, by plus minus VBE, let's say, 2, and then we get to the base of transistor Q4, which is at the emitter of Q2. So from there, another VBE, which is this time VBE4, we get to the common emitter at the bottom. So as a result, effectively, using Kirchhoff voltage law, or KVL, I can write um, V base emitter of transistor 1 plus V base emitter of transistor 3, basically the two base emitters on in the let's say, left-hand side of the circuit. So this side is equal to the sum of the two other base emitter voltages, transistor 2 plus V base emitter of transistor 4, which is basically the transistor on the right-hand side of the circuit. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, the only thing I need to do is I need to substitute for base emitter. We know that the base emitter of transistor for BJT transistors is just uh, eta VT, or this is the ideality factor. VT is thermal voltage, so this one is the thermal voltage. Uh, KT over Q, basically. So uh, KT, K Boltzmann constant, and Q is the electron charge. Uh, both of them are mentioned here as a reference, so Boltzmann constant and also Q electron charge. So that is what we know as VT. We don't need to use it here. I'm just mentioning it as reference. So v VBE is it, it are VT, and then we have Allen, natural logarithm of the current that passed through the transistor, so the current of transistor, let's say, and then divide by saturation current of transistor. Let's say in this case, uh, we're referring to a collector current for transistor, roughly, assuming beta is uh, large enough for transistor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute uh, in equation 1 uh, from equation 2, and that's the only thing I need to do. Okay, so let's do that. Allow me to just, uh, for the sake of having better space, allow me to just shift this one to here, and then I'm going to refer to this as thermal voltage, as I mentioned. So that's uh, VT. Ideality factor is also some, a number that is between 1 and 2 for BJT closer to 2 but it doesn't matter for us in this analysis because it will cancel out. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, from 1 and 2, 
you can see that if I substitute uh, for all base emitters, assuming these all these four transistors, they are they have uh, the same junction properties. They are in the same substrate, and uh, we are assuming that uh, they have the same eta vt common. So basically, that would cancel out from uh, both sides of the equation, and we get natural logarithm for VBE1. Uh, the IC1, which is effectively uh, this current. So let's say IC1 or I1, which is this current. Okay, so I1 divided by IS plus for VBE3, uh, what I get is the same thing. Uh, it's going to be natural logarithm of collector of uh, transistor 3 which is I3, this current. Okay, so it's going to be I3 divided by saturation current equal to, on the other side of the equation, we have VBE2, and for that is the same story. It's going to be natural logarithm of collector current of transistor 2 on top, so it's going to be I2. So I2 divided by IS, and plus natural logarithm finally of uh, for transistor Q4, we have I4 that is passing through the collector of that transistor. So it's going to be I4 divided by IS. Okay, great. Um, so as a result, the next step would be um, we, we can just simplify uh, knowing the natural logarithm properties. So we can do, just do I1, I2. 3 divided by is squared. Again, we make the assumption that all the transistors are um, similar. So they are in the same substrate, very in the same package. Uh, so we can make the rudimentary assumption that is is the same for uh, these transistors. So we have ln i2 i4 divided by is squared. So obviously, from the, this equality, we can just uh, uh, knowing that the polarity of these currents are all, all positive, we can just say I1, I3 is equal to I2, I4. Okay, so uh, what is the consequence of this equation number, let's say, 3? Well, the, the beauty of this 3 is now I'm going to use the up-amp properties. So uh, one lesson is... From three, um, from three, I'm going to rewrite it here. Or maybe I can just continue writing I three here. Keep in mind that one um, interesting thing that equation three indicates is I four is I one I three divided by I two. So effectively, the circuit is also a current multiplier, analog current multiplier, and analog current divider. So if you want to also utilize that property, we can do that as well. So that's very nice. So now using equation 3 and combine that, let's put it this way. So I'm going to use equation 3. So we have um, I1, I3 equal to I2, I4. I just read re the equation 3 here. Now, what is the uh, value of I1? Well, take a look at this. If you look at the KCL uh, for the negative terminal of op-amp number 1, we know that the voltage over there is zero because of virtual short. Now, this I1 that goes should also pass through the resistor R1 because uh, for ideal op amp, as long as it's in linear region, nothing can go through its input terminal because effectively, practically, it has infinite impedance. So whatever current that goes through R1 keep going up. As a result, I can say um, I1 is simply uh, V1 over R1, because uh, V1 is the only voltage across resistor R1. And I can say I3, for the same reason, is V3 over R3. For the same reason, I can say I2 uh, for here, on top right, is equal to V2 over R2. And I can also say um, I4, for the same reason, finally, regarding op-amp number 4. 
uh, is equal to effectively V out, which is the voltage across R out. Um, and therefore, as a result, I4 is V out over R out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is using 4, which basically means these, these things that I just discovered, and 3. So let me just uh, change the order of these things. Okay, I'm going to just put 4 here. And no need to rewrite 3. I'm going to say using 3 and 4. So 3 being... Um, so 3 being this equation here on the very right that we discovered with respect, with respect to relationship between currents, I can just substitute in equation 3 using all the equation that I found in equation 4 effectively. So using that, I can say um, when, I, when I'm indicating I1 times I3 is equal to I2 times I4, so I get V1 over R1, that's the substitution for I1, for I3, V3 over R3, equal to V2 over R2, that's for I2, and finally for I4 is V out over R out. And we are almost done, because if we just simplify this whole thing, Obviously, what we get uh, is, okay, so let me just make sure. Okay, so if we just simplify this whole thing, we get V out on this side, which we keep it on this side. V out is equal to, and everything else on the other side. So we get V1 divided by V2 multiplied by V3, and then R to R O goes to the other side to numerator, so it becomes, so it becomes uh, simply times R two R out divided by, of course, R one R three that we have in, in the left side in denominator. There you go. So this is exactly the equation we wanted to uh, prove, and we got it. Okay, so I hope that. Uh, this example that um, shows how, uh, at least in the first attempt, we can realize one quadrant analog divider and even analog multiplier, both in the sense of voltage implementation version of it or even current uh, implementation version of it, how it is working and how we are effectively utilizing the voltage um, current uh, properties of or relations for transistors and in combined or in combination with op amps to uh, realize such a such an interesting calculator effectively or, or effectively uh, the analog computer because it's really doing uh, multiplication and division. I hope that this example is uh, useful and helpful.